Right, so we're back at the church hall. Um, so the purpose of this really is a bit of a follow-up video to the last one that we did, which got a few comments. Um, and I think we were going to do a follow-up anyway, because I think it was it's a good idea to sort of show the conclusion to what we'd done uh, previously. But I think there's a good lesson here in terms of why we don't assume uh, that something is the case unless we've actually checked it thoroughly. What came of it was a lot of people were making the assumption because of the reading that this was in fact a TT system. One person actually said, it's obviously a TT system. Now you didn't think it was, and the only way that you were going to sign off and say it was is if you could inspect it and look at it, because yep. in, in our opinion, and this has been backed up, is that the only way you can actually <laughs> check... Well, the only way to check it would be to dig all this tarmac up, go down there, and see if there was an earth electrode. And then, what's the problem um, with that? <laughs> well, obviously the main intake position here, it's all tarmac It's uh, We don't know the condition or the age of the existing supply to the building. And clearly, you know, the cable that runs up the wall there gives the impression that it's a TT system, but we're never 100% sure. Um, and not only that, we're not sure who owns this particular arrangement, whether the church had it installed many, many years ago or whether the actual utility company installed that. So the first protocol was to go back to the utility company and say, could you mind uh, telling us who actually owns this earthing arrangement? Now, if they supply the earth... Just on that as well, there was no cost to the customer for us to no, check No, absolutely that. no cost for this check. It's completely free of charge. Yeah. So the utility company have come out. They've said that this earthing arrangement that's here at present is not sufficient. It's not adequate enough. And what they've done is they've done some work inside and they've converted this installation to a TNCS or PME system that now gives us a, a ZE of 0.13 and what they've done is they've recommended that we do a risk assessment for the rest of the property to determine whether a, uh, an additional earth rod is, is recommended um, which I will do and I'll discuss with the customer but this has all been sorted out, no cost to the customer no intrusive digging or messing around here at the main intake position and it's been uh, hopefully pretty much resolved yeah so there was a lot of people just saying it's obviously tt just leave it you yeah know, why, why bother the, the other thing that, that came up in the comments was that, that that cable's fine the fact that it's all degraded and got no insulation on it uh, well if it, 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 it's open to the elements you can see here that it, it starts flatten out and over time with even you know muck and rubbish people coming along it's open to the elements the other thing is as well is that it's not being used as it was intended it had a sheath on it to start with and therefore the manufacturer has intended that cable to be sheathed not unsheathed yes you can use bare conductors if you if you install one and it's intended for use as a bare conductor but this is just open to the elements. It just goes under the ground. There's no pit for inspection. We don't know what the condition is under the, under the floor. I wasn't gonna start taking a pick or a shovel to this area to start digging up. We've got a three phase supply that comes in here. Yes, granted, they're only using single phase. And again, it's a historic property. We don't know the condition of the cable. The safest, most economical way for the customer was to get the utility company or the DNO involved to determine who was responsible for it. At no cost to the Again, customer. Again, at no cost to the yeah. customer. So, so what, we're, what we're saying here really is, what's the point in making an assumption? Well, there's no point to making an assumption. You can never assume with electricity, ever. You know, you turn something off and you're never 100% certain it's dead. I've had it many, many times myself. Mm -hmm. I've turned boards off and there's cable, you know, there's wires still been live because they've had a, a back feed from another board. So you can never assume that something is what it seems to be. So in summary, if you get an installation similar to this and you come along, never ever assume that it's just, it is a TT system without actually checking, especially if you can't access where the, the end of it terminates in, it's in such a condition like this where it's, it's gone under the ground, it appears to be a TT. We can't assume. Just because something looks that way doesn't mean to say that it is. We don't know the, you know, um, the history of this. We don't know where it's terminated under the ground. We don't know what condition it's in under the ground. Thing, conditions can quickly change. The last time we were here, it was nice, brilliant sunshine. If I retested this today, we might get an even better result, but we might not. It's slightly damper. The chances are we might get a better one. Yes, um, 
readings that are TT systems that are you know, between 25 and 200 ohms are absolutely fantastic. Uh, but given the nature of this building and the protection that's currently in use here, uh, in my opinion, this wasn't sufficient and uh, it was no longer satisfactory, which is why we, we got the utility well, company. That's in your opinion. I mean, the utility company backed that up. Yeah, of course. So thanks, guys, for watching. Keep the comments coming. We do appreciate it. Everything's uh, good. It's interesting to see what people have to say about certain things. And we'll get some more videos out to you soon.